In this video, let's talk about workspace settings. Now, within workspace, uh, we have an option called as a workspace settings to basically manage, configure the workspace which you have created within Power BI service. Now, there are various options available in terms of general licensing, Azure connection, system storage, uh, integrating with a source control provider like Git, uh, one lake, workspace identity, network security, uh, general connections, embed codes, one lake settings. So we are going to see all those things uh, within the demo. So as you see over here in the screen, you have an option to upload an image, change the name, description, and domain. You can change the licensing mode over here. Uh, then from a connections perspective, you can configure Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage. You can view the system storage. Uh, you can connect to a Git provider, either it can be Azure DevOps or a GitHub. One Lake settings uh, can be configured. Uh, you can connect uh, One Lake File Explorer. You can enable cache for shortcuts. Uh, you can say I have connected a workspace identity. Uh, basically, an identity is uh, it's kind of a managed identity that will be specific to this Power BI workspace. Uh, network security. Uh, embed codes, uh, one leg settings, uh, all these options are available as a part of workspace. So I'm going to show you an action. So let me show you a workspace like the Power BI uh, homepage. So this is a Power BI homepage. Now, if I navigate to a workspace, I have created a lot of workspace over here. So you can see the list from here. And I have done some like say reporting uh, on a specific data set in a in different different workspace now as you see in this complete list i have a whole bunch of workspace now if i navigate to any of the workspace so let me go into one of the workspace say get a step now from here i have an option to go to workspace settings so i can go to workspace setting from here now if i click on workspaces over here and if i click on Giresh Dev, three dots over here, I can check this workspace setting and workspace access from here. So let me go into workspace setting from here. If I'm going to workspace setting, I'm able to see the workspace related information. Okay. Now, first thing general here, you can upload an image. So uh, it's always nice to upload an image against your workspace so that you exactly identify what is the uh, main purpose of that workspace and how it is branded as per the uh, the need. Now I can delete the workspace image from here if it is uploaded. I can change the name, description of the workspace. Always advisable to put description for your workspace so that everyone knows what the purpose is. And also from a domain perspective, you can assign a workspace to a domain. It is an optional component. So if you want to structure your workspace against a specific domain, so domain is again like uh, further structuring or consolidating various workspaces within one specific domain. So if you have an organization which has, uh, say, uh, different departments like sales, marketing, procurement, you can create a domain and then associate workspace within that specific domain. So one domain can be attached to a workspace. Now, workspace contact, workspace contact, basically people will get notification if there are any issues affecting the workspace. So always advisable to have at least one person, but then you have an option to add other people within your organization as well. So I can add as many users uh, as a workspace contact. Workspace OneDrive, you can attach a SharePoint site uh, so here I have attached a dev SharePoint site, but then I have other SharePoint site I can connect. So let me say if I have any other workspace, so let me type in say dev, I can see dev SharePoint site, but then if I have uh, any other SharePoint site, uh, like say if I have UAD SharePoint site, I can connect that SharePoint site and then uh, that workspace uh, will get assigned to that specific SharePoint sites OneDrive. I can remove the workspace from here. So there is a button to remove the workspace. So that will permanently delete the workspace after a retention period of seven days. So that's an option. Uh, now, as you see over here, there is no save button. So whatever change you make, it is applied. Okay, so if I assign this to a say sales order domain, it is saved, that's it. You did not save it again and again. License info, I can 
assign a license for this workspace so in power bi you need to assign a license for a specific workspace now it starts with say, pro so if i click on edit i have an option to uh, change this license from pro to either premium per user or any other licensing mode if i have capacity configured now as this is like a simple workspace for me pro works better because i'm gonna use just power bi features and collaborate on reports dashboard and scorecard now if you want to have premium uh, feature set enabled so you can use premium per user to collaborate using premium features using paginated report data flows and data marts so if you want to use paginated report data flows and data marts then this is a wise option to select uh, to collaborate and share content in a premium per user workspace user needs premium per user license so that means if you select this option then the consuming user needs to have a premium per user licenses attached and then there are other capacity based licenses so i'm not going to make a change on that i'll click on cancel going back to azure connection so in azure connection you can connect azure data services to power bi so now here azure cloud gets involved so if you have built any azure data services you can connect that now one of the services like azure data like storage gen 2 so if you have a valid azure subscription within your tenant you can configure an azure data lake gen2 storage account so there is an option to configure currently it is not configured you need to click on configure and then you need to select a subscription now i do not have any subscription attached to this tenant that's why you don't see this list but if you have then you will be able to pick a subscription and against that subscription you can select the resource group and then point to a appropriate storage account but this has to be like say configured beforehand okay so just cancel that out <coughs> Sorry. Uh, in system storage here you will be able to see all the artifacts which you have created like the semantic model so i have four semantic model created it has a related item so there is a dashboard there is a streaming dashboard uh, all these items are listed over here and i have an option to delete that model okay now i can delete directly from here uh, I can uh, uh, see the size which is consumed by that semantic model. Uh, so as you see over here, it is just it says that 4MB owned by me and 4MB is used. So so this will give you a night indication of which uh, semantic model is consuming more space. And then you can accordingly take an action either if you want to put it as an import model or you just do a direct query on that specific data set. And then there are other use cases as well whereby you can reduce the storage space. Get integration from a source code, uh, source control perspective, you can connect your workspace to a Git repository. Now the Git repository can be uh, Azure DevOps, uh, hosted on that specific tenant or it can be github so but remember you need to have a premium license for this workspace to continue so you cannot do with a pro license you need to have a premium license to connect it to manage your code and back up your work so if i click on azure devops over here i'll be able to connect to this particular uh, azure active directory account and then once i connect to that specific account i'll be able to uh, connect to a specific project uh, now as i does not have a premium license i am not able to see this option but if i go to license i go here premium per user uh, and i'll say premium per user reserved sqpp3 small semantic model and i'll say select this license is say only people who have premium per license will be able to access this workspace so i'm applying this pp3 uh, semant uh, pp3 region southeast asia and if I go to get integration now, I can connect to an Azure DevOps and then it will list down all the organization within my Azure DevOps. So I can pick Sigurish Kit and if there are any projects within that, it will list down the project. So I've just sampled SEP 2024. Git repository is this. I can select the branch. So I have a lot of branch created. I can select say SEP 003 and Git folder is again, it's like either you can specify or it will automatically create on its own and then i can click on connect and send so i'm not going to connect this i'll just click on cancel i'll go back to license i'll just change back to pro i'll select pro remove from premium and then that's it going back to one lake now one lake settings so basically one lake uh it will allow you to uh, configure and manage settings for one lake in this workspace uh, 
I can enable cash for shortcuts. You can download the one leg app and then integrate with uh, the one leg service. Now, uh, this I'm going to cover in a, uh, like in the advanced topic. So uh, nothing much going on over here. It's again connecting to Azure services uh, based on one leg. Workspace identity in order to uh, for you to connect to that specific external uh, data sources, you can create a workspace identity. Now, if I click on workspace identity, it will create a workspace identity and how it creates workspace identity is basically creates in Azure and then you can uh, navigate to Azure and you'll be able to find that I've created this Giresh dev workspace identity. It will give you the ID. It will assign the role as workspace contributor and list down the authorized users. You can even delete the workspace identity from here. Now, this is important because if you want to uh, use something called as a service principal account uh, to access the data source, then this is the best option to go with. Network security, managed private endpoints only available for workspace assigned to fabric capacity. So if you have anything related to the fabric capacities, then you will be able to manage this private endpoint so that people can securely connect to Azure resource or private link service. So again, uh, some sort of settings happening in Microsoft Azure in terms of networking. And uh, once you connect that private endpoint, you will be able to uh, synchronize uh, between uh, various Azure based services and notebook and Spark job definitions. There are multiple options in Power BI. So if you click on general, it will allow you contributor to update the app to this workspace. So basically uh, contributors uh, can uh, basically uh, update the app for the workspace. Uh, if you select this option, uh, there is a template app. You can template apps are developed for sharing outside your organization. Now template app will be created for developing and releasing the app. Remember, we had this option in general over here uh, when we created the workspace. Now, currently in general, you don't see any option, but then let me uh, show you an option. If I go to apps for BI, and once you create a workspace, it will ask you to basically specify what kind of app you're creating, okay? So if I click on new workspace and under advanced, as you see over here, it says template apps. Template apps are developed for sharing outside your organization. So if you select this, then it will be based on that template apps, okay? So the setting, as you see over here in general, it says template apps are developed for sharing outside your organization. A template app workspace will be created for developing and releasing the app. Then there are data model settings. It says users can edit data models in the Power BI service itself. So uh, if you need to have that capability for user to edit the data model within the Power BI service, you can select this option. So it allows the workspace members to edit the data model in the service itself, okay, in Power BI service itself. Edits are permanent and automatically saved in the feature preview and version histories and saved. So again, if you want to make that conscious decision to edit the data models on the fly uh, using Power BI service, this is an option you can select. Data connection, enable granular access control for all data connections. So it enforces strict access control for all the data connection type. When this is turned on, uh, all the shared item will be disconnected from data source. So these are basically edited by users who do not have permission to use the data connection. So again, a lot of options available from a granular access control. Uh, you can select this and then you will get that uh, feature set enabled. Uh, embed codes, embed codes, I currently do not have any embed codes, but then embed codes are related to publish to web. So if you have a dashboard and if you're publishing it to web, then an embed code will get generated. Now, all those embed code can also be accessed using. So if I go into the setting icon over here and go to admin portals, there is an option to see the embed code. So I have created a lot of embed codes over here. Uh, there are a couple of reports which is published to web. So I have an option to view on web I have an option to delete this code and I have an option to get the code. So this is how the code will look like. So there is a link which you can send in an email or there is an HTML iframe tag. So this is basically the, uh, the embed code. Now I have an option uh, if, if workspace, this particular workspace had an embed code, it would have been listed over here. But this listing is for my entire tenant, okay? So if it have gone into say test workspace, I would have seen that embed code. So let me go into uh, the test workspace. So if I go into the workspace over here 
And if I go into the test workspace and if I go to workspace setting and if I go to Power BI and embed codes, I'm able to see the workspace of the embed code. Now from here, you can get the code. So if I click here, get the code, I get that same screen. I close this, I can delete the embed code. So if I do not want a published web feature available uh, for a specific report, I can remove the embed code. Again, it's a security decision if you want to make within your organization. Last option, delegated settings. One like settings, you can authenticate with one like user delegated SaaS token. So allow basically applications to authenticate using a one like SaaS token. So the users can create uh, uh, one like SaaS by requesting a user delegation key. So if you turn this on, uh, then it will say, okay, authenticate with one like user delegated SaaS token, and then the entire workspace users will be able to get that uh, token defined. So if I click on confirm, then it's enabled for all users. So I have an option to revert to default. I'll just say revert to default, and then that, that settings will be turned off. Again, this is related to Azure one like services. So uh, this is like a complete uh, different skew. Uh, of services uh, for which you need to connect to uh, if required. Now, uh, I'm not going to cover entire thing from a fabric perspective. This is generally related to Power BI. So we're only talking about workspace settings at a very high level. Uh, there are um, other things which you can do from a workspace perspective, like you have an option to pin to top, you have an option to I view the workspace access. If I want to see how many people are accessing this workspace, I can see Girish is accessing this workspace as an admin capacity. If I specify Alex name over here, and if I select Alex, uh, and then I can specify the role, viewer, admin, contributor, I'll make Alex as a contributor, and I have an option, another to make, uh, say, Edel as a viewer. So I'll just type in Edel's name. So I'll just say add user, Edel, and then from here, I'll select viewer and add. And this is how you basically add different users with different role set, right? So if I again go back to this test workspace, so let me go back to this test workspace. And if I click on workspace access, I will be able to see all the users which have been added. Now, again, uh, if I click on add people or users, I'll just say Alex and I'll assign a member, I'll click on add. Admin members and contributors have edit and view access. Viewers only have view access. So I should be able to see Alex's name. Similarly, if I type in Adele's name, I'll just say Adele, say viewer, click on add, and then go back. I can see Adele has been added. Now remember, you need to click on that add button in order for that users to be visible in this list. So that's it, folks. This is all about Power BI workspace settings. Thanks for watching.